Okay, go. You're now being recorded. <laughs> oh, oh, welcome everyone. <laughs> okay. <laughs> then, uh, Susan, I have a question for you. Uh, so, your uh, presentation for the uh, uh, um, uh, UN was mm -hmm. so good to, you know, like, uh, okay, so I help her is, I mean, I loved your uh, PowerPoint template <laughs> you use in this presentation because I'm thinking, I'm, you know, teaching online, right? So, I'm using PowerPoint a lot. So, so I, I, I love to choose different PowerPoint template, but I want, I'm thinking to use one uniform uh, PowerPoint for for every class. I think you know your template is just so good because you have all the colors on the side and then I can use each color you know for the contents for the pages. I wonder if you could share a template with me. Oh well thank you. Um, actually I created that because so the United Nations has these um, uh, sustainable development goals and mm. they're um, and they've got a huge like um, design icon marketing thing that, uh -huh. um, and so because they wanted me to focus the sort of policy pieces around the sustainable development goals, I, um, I bootlegged uh, pictures of the different icons and then that strip of the different colors is actually just um, a, like a screen capture that I pulled of the that um, rainbow. So anyway, so the point was to have it align with the sponsor, you know, with their um, what they were doing. Um, it's it's really easy to do though, and also uh, PowerPoint has gotten way more sophisticated in its own design templates. And you mm -hmm. can pick and choose colors and change the master slide and and things like that. I know. I mean, I I have my computer is a little bit old, like two thousand eleven, and uh, so I have some, but I didn't find the ideal one. <laughs> so <laughs> so could you maybe send me a link? Let me know how to create uh, the new one. Like I really want a rainbow one. <laughs> um. Sure, and what I can also do is I can send you the JPEG of that rainbow strip. And uh -huh. then what you can do is just go in and create a, a template yourself okay. and then just slap it in into a master that. slide and then it would show up in all of them. But yeah. Um, Good, thank you. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> well, hi everyone again, uh, welcome to um, it's Friday. <laughs> if you're here at your computer and it's noon, it must be Friday. And that's always a good thing, right? Um, or has our sense of weekends completely evaporated? Maybe not for you guys, because you're on a good kind of school oriented kind of thing. Um, well, you know what? I wanted to start by going around and I've got this calendar uh, date thing that my daughter gave me and at the end of every week that it has like a reflection question. And so I just thought, well, that'd be, and it's kind of nice because it helps to reframe the past week. So why don't we go around and, um, and just, um, uh, why don't we say something that went well this week or something that we're grateful for? Um, and I'll start. Um, um, I'm, um, oh, and for those of you watching at home <laughs> and joined us before, um, um, if you want to introduce yourself, please do. Um, I'm Susan Walker um, from the University of Minnesota. And um, so one thing I'm grateful for is I was thinking about my students in my undergraduate course this semester are um, really engaged. Like I, I, I have 48 students in that class and I have been averaging 46 or 47 students every Tuesday and Thursday. Um, um, all but one took yesterday's exam. They are lovely, they're not whiny, and even if they are, I would love them, but it's always nice not to have whiny students. So I'm really grateful for the 48 students that I have inherited this semester. Um, and I'm gonna pick Lori. Uh, something that went well. Um, well, actually, um, I think I've shared before that I'm close to retirement. And this year, 
I thought I was going to go to full retirement because I still feel young inside and I still love my job. However, after this year, <laughs> I am thinking um, maybe I will just go one more year. So I am sharing with my um, other parent Ed, um, you know, that, that I'm not going to just leave in a fast way, but um, but I also worry about it because I am the um, leadership person in our building, our early learning building, and I'm um, the team leader. And when we got all these new directors, I, um, I kind of trained them in about ECFE because they didn't know about us. So I feel like I've had a lot of responsibility and then I co, um, I co-coordinate the Ready for Kindergarten program in our corporate community and in our, our uh, ECF or the uh, ECFE program. So I, I've got my fingers on a lot of things. And, and so I find myself now um, getting things in order a little bit. Um, my husband got COVID and I went through quarantine and it was horrible. And I think going through that quarantine, I started to think during that time, a couple asked us to go to Cabo. <laughs> and so I, I started thinking, you know, maybe I won't hang in here two more years. Maybe I'll just make it one more year. So um, this is getting long, but the, the, the thing that I accomplished this week is we have been blessed in ECFE with so many wonderful parenting books. I mean, we have shelves and shelves of them because our Barnes and Noble here in town, um, I don't know if everywhere there's a Barnes and Noble this ha that this happens to, but people should reach out if you're near a Barnes and Noble because they will devote a certain percentage of sales to um, our program twice a year. And we just have hundreds and hundreds of dollars that we can spend at Barnes and Noble in, in their um, toy section, their book session. So over the years, we have really accumulated uh, really a wide um, venue of parenting books. And so I took it on myself to categorize them by content <laughs> a few years ago. So, um, I'm getting that all set up so when I leave, like if you, um, it has a little colored dot on it with, um, if you want a topic on toilet training, I'm just picking, um, you go up to the guide, it'll show you what color dot and then you go to those books. So um, I completed that this week, so I'm really happy. <laughs> I'm current on that. <laughs> okay, talk too much. Um, Karen, do you want to go next? Oh, isn't there somebody else named Karen on here? Dang it. Sure, I'll go next. <laughs> um, something um, good that happened. There's a lot of different good things that happened. Um, and I don't know which one to pick. So yesterday I got a, I, well, actually, I, yeah, I got an email from a parent that I had done some coaching with who was also in my classes, but hasn't been in my classes for the last year. Um, but catching up with her and catching up with how things are working for her in her life and just being able to see that strength as a parent to um, to be a problem solver. Um, she's got a, a dad who was dying of cancer who has passed since passed, daughter who was recently diagnosed with um, ASD and she herself is recovering from leukemia or is on the, the, that end of that. So there's a lot going on in this person's life. Um, but to have her connect with me, have her just check in, and then to tell me her story. Um, it's a gift to be in this position to get that story. Um, and I just kept thinking about the gift, the skills that she has to navigate through this and the strengths that she has. And so trying to pull those into that conversation. So that was a gift to be a, a, kind of like a witness at this part of her life. And I am going to choose, oh, who do I want to go to? I'm going to go to Melissa. So um, my gratefulness this week really has nothing to do with work. <laughs> it's this little nugget right back here. 
Um, we had, <laughs> this is my Gwen. Um, we've had some big doctoring and stuff going on and I'm just really grateful for the doctors and the things that are going on with all of that and for every second that we have together. Um, you know, I got into parent education because I, I'm a parent myself and the world of parenting is the passion. So um, that, that's why my own is why I got into this. So, and I wasn't, I mean, when I first was interested in families and parenting, I wasn't even a parent yet but it doesn't matter. It's because that, that passion is there. And, and a little side note, I did get, I was like, is there something at work that I was grateful for? Um, I did finally get the yes, go ahead. We can have in class, like we can have in-person classes. I was still, they were still hesitating on that and saying I was going to have to bring everybody to a different building to be able to do it. And I'm like, oh, why? If they're allowed at that building, why can't we do it at this building? So they finally said yes, and I am grateful for that. So we're getting that spring book out. We have like a week to put it all together and get everything out, but we can do it. So um, UG, you're next to me. So in, in my picture, so I'm going to go UG next. Thank you, Melissa. Oh, gosh. Uh, uh, one thing I'm very grateful. Uh, I, I wish uh, Jennifer is here today. I mean, that is related to her. She introduced me to her network, and then I had um, uh, uh, I mean, uh, communication with uh, um, Senate, uh, uh, I mean, city senator in Montana, and she introduced me to another leader in early education. So uh, Grace, she and I, we had a, a meeting, Google meeting that was very exciting. And uh, actually, I would, you know, that is one thing I, I, I want to uh, ask everyone, you know, op, you know, uh, advice for that. But now we only share that. So, so she said um, she she didn't she didn't know ECFE. So I introduced ECFE to her, and she looked at the website. She said, "Oh gosh, this is a golden standard." Um, I mean, yeah. So we talk about uh, um, AC, uh, uh, ACEs and the. Uh, Montana ranked the number one, the ratio number one suicide ratio in the country, across the country. And uh, so, and also we talk about, you know, the school uh, student um, mental health in schools, you know, the crisis, right? So I, we feel, we talk, you know, like we see, we feel the same. I mean, all these um, um, uh, mental health and counselor and the therapist, these are Afterward, right? Afterward, we try to heal, try to fix, but ECFE is a perfect program to prevention, for prevention, for proaction, right? So this is so good. However, the challenge is uh, uh, right now in Montana, you know, the state is not a rich state. They do not have money. They have been trying to uh, push in the legislation to, uh, to pass the law for preschool. But you know that was for years, you know, not you know, not um, going well. Uh, so that is one challenge. Another challenge is a local culture in Montana. It is fine. It kind of like you know, people, uh, many people, especially for these people in a kind of a poverty line. So they feel like they they do not they think family life is kind of like privacy, private. They do not want to talk about it. They don't want to you know hide it, right? So. That is kind of a tendency in this, you know, rural mountain <laughs> area. So yeah, there's two challenges, you know, we, uh, yeah, we, we talk about, and I was thinking um, <laughs> my fiance gave me a very creative idea. Like <laughs> he suggested me to write a letter to the first lady. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, so I mean, like, you know, uh, especially like uh, 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 statistics shows uh, that it was before COVID, right? So 67% of American adults uh, have at least one or more ACEs, and one in eight of all the population have more than four or more. And it is, um, uh, you know, it causes lots of uh, health problems. Um, like throughout a lifetime, right? So that is, I think right now after the COVID and maybe like a more like a, uh, I mean, plus, um, uh, you know, all the past years of the, you know, this uh, political situation in uh, America, right? So I would say right now, 100% uh, Americans, they have traumatic experience now, right? So I think maybe this is an urgent call to, 
family education, a federal family education. I was thinking F F E. <laughs> this is yeah. This is one thing I'm grateful. You know, I I I feel like you know yeah. I I know like I feel start to see some kind you know a little bit you know hope <laughs> for the future. Yeah, this is my gr uh, gratitude at, uh, for this week. And another thing is, I'm very happy to see uh, Susan. You know, I, I confirmed with Susan; she's still she will continue to do what she's doing because I thought when she said she has only one year in um, <laughs> yeah, I thought that she she's retired, she's leaving. I said, oh my god, no! I I just you know I feel like I'm already. I start to attach to our group, to, you know, to attach to to Susan. I do not want she to leave. And then, and then she confirmed she's nothing. She's still go, uh, doing what she's doing. I'm still very grateful. Thank you. So uh, I'm calling um, Sarah. Thank you, G. I am grateful my parents got their first shots on Sunday. This is a really big deal. They're in Florida. It's been wild trying to get appointments in Florida. Um, and so that is above everything else. One of the most uh, important things that has happened probably in just a couple of years. So great. Um, Shelly, Lauren. Um, I, I just got my first vaccine this week. So that's a big celebration. Super happy about that. <laughs> um, and my parents are both fully vaccinated as well. And that is all just happened too, Sarah. So I can, I can relate with you on that. It's a pretty big deal. Um, and I think, you know, thinking of something work related, um, I'm kind of happy to be status quo this week. Like you're kind of, kind of in the middle of the semester, everything's going well, everybody knows what they're doing. And I mean, for me this week, that felt good. So I will choose Nikki. Hello. Um, I think I'm, my mindset is kind of around kind of like what Karen said um, about somebody reaching out to you this week. I had a happy surprise and that is on Thursdays I do a um, group with parenting students um, with one of our high schools and I had been made aware probably November-ish about a prenatal student. I reached out, I didn't get a response and um, she delivered December 30th. I've been continuing to reach out here and there. I've sent um, emails via the district email. I have sent texts because I have received her via referral through the HUG program. Um, I then learned um, that one of my students is connected to her and I said, oh, would you like to reach out and tell her about our group? She had already known about it. I mean, I had sent her information. Um, but nevertheless, I had never spoke to her, never met her yesterday out of the blue. She, I, there she was in my group. <laughs> and I told her, um, welcome. I am so thrilled to meet you and to know you. And um, I think just kind of like what Karen said, she shared so much of her story and um, I will be able to kind of walk beside her for the next couple of years. She's um, a sophomore. And so I just, it was just such a surprise. I think um, I'm so grateful. She for sure made my week, but I think she might've made my month. And um, I will call on Jen. Hi, so I came a little late. Were there specific instructions? Uh, Jen, we're just sharing um, from the past week what we're grateful for or something lovely that happened. Um, so I am, our district is on break this week. Um, and so I'm a teacher on special assignment. And so I'm supposed to also be on break, but I worked. So I'm, I worked some. So I, I learned this week that I'm, I'm, I'm not a good, I'm not good when I take a break. Like, Either I need to like take a break, take a break, or not like one or the other, because otherwise I sit and stew or I think about all the things that I could be, should be doing that I really don't want to be doing. And um, so it's been, it hasn't been a very good break in the like sense of being refreshed and feeling good about getting that break. But, but I got a new recliner today. 
delivered. It's been ordered for months and months and months and it came it's in my living room right now and so when i get off this i'm going to go sit in it because i haven't got to do that yet so if you're buying furniture people know that that's like four months before you get it just 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 know so thank you good to see your faces oh and now i pick do i pick who needs uh christy did you go thanks jen well um when I, when I was listening to you, I was thinking, oh, I just don't know what I'm great. And, and now I have like 14 things because I was listening to all of your gratitude. But in a world where things are virtual, this came this week. It's an actual printed catalog for spring. And I love opening it up and smelling it. Because if you touch it, you look through it, you write on it, you give it to, like, I just... I love the day that we give birth to this. So that happened this week. And who's, who else needs a turn? Raise your hand. Becca. Well, just like you, Christy, every time someone shares, I add something to my list of something I'm grateful for over this past week. So that's wonderful in and of itself. Um, I did get my first shot on Wednesday, so that was super exciting. I didn't think it would come for a long time. Um, and I have a walkers and talkers toddlers class on Tuesday mornings. That's pretty small. And I really love this group, but they're also really, really quiet, the parents. So sometimes the parent ed piece of things is a little challenging getting them to, um, I can tell they're engaged and they're thinking, but they're not big talkers. And um, just the day before I had heard there was a family who was in our birth to five class um, at the other site, we've got two sites, um, who had gone to class for the first time the week before and it hadn't gone well. They had a two-year-old and, or almost two-year-old and the separation di didn't go well. And most of the kids were older and it was grandma who brought the little guy and they had recommended that maybe they try my class instead because it's just younger kids. And so they came, I didn't even know they'd been added to my class. So I'm glad that at least the other teacher had mentioned it to me. And um, it went super well. This little guy had a wonderful time and didn't wanna leave at the end. Of, and so school became a happy, positive thing. Um, we will probably be working on separation after spring break, but um, he'll have at least a few weeks of school being a happy, comfortable place first um, without that fear. So that just felt like a huge win and um, mom really participated. So it was just like a win-win all over the place getting another family in my class. And I will pass on to Carrie. Thank you. This has been so much fun. And like everyone said, it's contagious, right? You start out by going, hmm, and then before you know it, you have 12 things listening to everybody. Um, I would say that last week, what went well and what I'm really grateful for at work is collaboration and the, all the teams of people that, I, that for each family that I work with, because a couple of the families, the parents, I feel like had really big breakthroughs this week. And just those moments you sort of live for as a parent educator. And I just feel like now they can move forward with the help they need and the healing path and all of that. Um, so, and just really grateful for the, for collaboration that happens, but then also, because even if the parents seemed to like have the breakthrough while they were with me, that wasn't like it was every piece, right? Every piece of that team of people who contributed and worked together. So just really cool to see that. Um, and then what was I going to say? I lost my train of thought now, but that was the really big thing. Um, okay. Who is left? Greta, did you go? Okay. Okay. So I agree with Carrie and with Becca. It's like, I didn't know what to say. And then I got time and I got what to, to witness everything that you guys are sharing. It's wonderful. And Christy, that was a good laugh. I love it. I love the, the brochure. That's awesome. It really feels good. Um, I'm 
we didn't have programming this week, so mine isn't related to my classes, but um, I am after this meeting um, being asked some questions in an interview from a gal who's doing parent ed licensure over at St. Cloud State. And she's going to ask questions about parent ed and she's going to observe me for four sessions, which I'm a little nervous about, but um, I'm excited about and, and I'm thankful why I'm thankful for it is she's someone who was a mom and uh, and then an uh, assistant in one of my classes and um so she's just gone on and so i'm thankful for that i'm really that's really says something and i'm encouraged by that this week so um ellen thanks greta um so we had our first outdoor class only this uh, this week. Um, no coming inside, 45 minutes start to finish. We had eight kids register, which feels enormous. I don't know why, um, but because you know, our classes have been you know six or under. So, but um, we had some families who we have not seen since COVID shut everything down in March. So really great to see those families. One mom sent me a message afterwards and she's like, Ellen, I almost felt like a total idiot. And I almost burst into tears. Just, she said, just walking up to you guys and seeing you was just so wonderful. So I was like, oh, that's good stuff. So I'm really glad that we pushed, um, we pushed to have that class because we are meeting a need. Families don't wanna come in. We will work with you on that. And then personally, my parents are getting their COVID shots tomorrow. So excited about that. And my district, our school district is considering sending middle and high school kids back to in-person full-time after spring break. Oh, please, dear Lord. My high schooler is doing fine. My seventh grade boy, not so much. He needs to be back in school. Amen. Amen. Uh, Cinnamon, I, we're just sharing what went well this week, your camera off, but oh, there she is. Yay. So I call on you. I choose you. I'm eating too. What went well this week? Um, I think being back is exciting. Um, we are working on our fall catalog and we are looking at keeping it back to normal pre COVID. Um, all of our preschoolers are hybrid and knock on wood, there's not been any COVID like exposure in our program. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I think that's probably the biggest um, thing is that we've been back now hybrid since the beginning of February and we haven't had any COVID. So yay, we're, we're ecstatic about that. Um, and families are super excited to be back. So that's fantastic. Um, and they are super excited to figure out what's going on for fall for us. So um, yeah. And I don't know, like I said, I just jumped on. So I don't know who hasn't gone yet. So sorry. Cinnamon, I think that's it. I think you are, you are our bookend. Um, <laughs> um, wow, thank you all. That was great. Like my heart is full. Um, it's, it's, um, it is really nice to share the great stuff that's, that's going on. So, um, so what else do you want to talk about today? Is there any way that the group can help you? Sarah's got, got I have a question. I have a question. So I, maybe you saw on Facebook, I'm going to use a word cloud for the first time. And I found got so many great suggestions. I have a tool. Could we just try a quick experiment? Could, could you guys help me see if this works? Um, I think I'm ready. Thank you. Jeez. Okay. Now I'm like, um, nervous. I'm like tense. Okay. Um, well, we're, we're your beta testers. How people can respond. I think I have to, damn it. Okay. I, I won't say that when I actually do this. So, um, uh, oh shoot. I think Susan, I can't, um, Oh, I have to give you permission to share. I think. Let me do perhaps, this. Perhaps. Perhaps. Yeah. Um, if you don't mind. No, not at all. What I, I want to do is paste the link into the chat. Oh. Um, Does that make sense? Like, I that's what I want to do because I think. Oh yeah. yeah. Can you do that? Just copy and paste. Well, I'm trying to copy and paste from the silly old tool, but here, let's try this. Okay. 
So that way I wouldn't have to even. Yeah, we could just, there we go. You do that. Hopefully that gets you to a link. Well, it's not be... clickable. Yeah. Damn it. So that, but we can, we can, we can copy and paste. That's not yeah. the, and if you put the three little dots on the right, just click that and hit copy. Maybe I just have to do this. Oh, Sarah, are you working? logged into your poll everywhere also? Well, I think so. Okay, because I think if you have it embedded in a slide or in a, in a Google slide, sometimes it doesn't work if you're not also simultaneously logged into poll everywhere because they're working together. Uh, it's working. You guys are responding, I think. Yep. Yeah, I submitted my favorite color. So okay, so I, so I went. Mine went to a screen that wants me to sign okay. in. Sorry, you don't want to look at that. There you go. No, you don't want to sign in. You should be. Able, you should get something that looks like this, like what Susan put up. Yeah. Oh, here it is. Put your first name. Yeah. I got it. Sorry. Yeah, they, they want you to give a like a, a name to identify yourself. Thanks, Susan. Sure. One is to just respond. respond yeah, one is fine. I mean, this is just practice. I don't want to take too much time. Okay. okay. I just want to make sure I can do this. So, um, okay. So then when I go to share, here is, so if I just go to show responses. Oh, look at that. How come it doesn't? Um, yeah. Oh. Hold on. How come it doesn't? We saw so it. It's like, it was there. Did you see it? Yeah. Oh, I saw it. Just for a sec, and then it went away. There. Yeah. It was there. Yeah. Everybody likes green. Isn't that sweet? <laughs> it's your favorite. Okay. It's throwing me off a little bit that the green isn't green. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you. Okay, I learned a ton. Thank you. So what website is that, Sarah? That's poll everywhere. Is that right? Or anywhere? I can never remember. Um, poll everywhere. .com. And I went ahead and bought their um, introductory. It's $120 a year, Woo. which I, I know, but I can do that as a business expense now. Yeah, that's true. And, um, and it's worth it because I need, I need some capacity and some flexibility that the free version doesn't offer. So there is a free version, however, and there are other if you look on Friends of Family Ed, my post, there are a couple of other suggestions in that thread that also looks good. Um, but then I actually met with a, a, another educator I'm collaborating with next week, and she, if, and for which, for whom I want to use the the cloud word cloud, and she said she's had the best luck with poll everywhere. So mm -hmm. that's what I went with. Um, so Sarah, yes. what do you use this for? So um, you can, you, it's, a, it's a way of, um, so in the classroom, if I were in person, I would have people write on post-it notes, one word per post-it, a response to a, a prompt. And then I would have them bring up their post-it notes to the board, and then their, uh, their, their responses mm -hmm. would remain relatively anonymous, and I could like move them around and sort them right on the board so that you could like weigh how many people said red, how many people said green, how many people said blue, whatever. But I don't have a way to do that when I'm teaching online. But this, the, the word cloud is similar in that it preserves anonymity for the respondents. And it also allows everyone to get the, the whole landscape of the responses mm -hmm. and sees how, how they're weighed relatively. Mm -hmm. Word clouds are oh. imperfect because they like spelling errors, muck it up and phrasing can be. So you have to give like a specific prompt, like using single words please describe, right? Um, happy, crappy, right? Like you could even give them multiple choice and they could take a pick, I think probably. Um, anyway, so that's what I'll use it for. Thank you, Sarah. Yeah. yeah. Sherry. Here's my... Thanks for helping me. Appreciate that. Yeah. Um, where did it just go? I was just going to share one that, um, where is it? Word cloud. So yes, Becca, as Susan is um, looking. Yeah, yeah, it's and you can it, you can you can feed the words in in a couple different ways. You can paste them all yourself, like from a whole list. You can have users log in and do it like you guys did, which is what I want. Um, all of that. So yeah, so I'm sharing one 
uh, you should be able to open it. This is the one that I did for the Manafi workshop last spring or last September, um, where I asked all of the, um, and, and so what I did was, <clears throat> This is this is more clunky than Sarah's version, and I understand Sarah's wanting it to be live and, and interactive. Um, what I do with my classes and with Zoom is I'll ask in chat for everybody to identify, you know, a word that they would use to describe themselves, and then just copy and paste all those words individually and slap those into the word cloud. And I think it's, we use like wordcloud.com or something, but the thing that I like about it, and you can see here is you can change the shape of them. So you can put it in a heart. And um, I've done it with, um, when I've had speakers, I have a wonderful dad who um, comes in with his kids. Al and his kids have this great podcast called Children of the Force. And so they come into my technology course. And, um, and so we'll do word clouds as a class after the class and, you know, sort of a, a thank you and then put them in a word cloud and share them, you know, back out with the family. So, yeah, I think they're really, they're really wonderful um, there. I find them really good too for building community um, because the students or the learners see themselves in the words and then they feel kind of more empowered as a community when they see all these incredible characteristics of the people that they're sharing learning with. So yeah, thank you so much for bringing that up. <gasps> Julia, <laughs> what a wonderful surprise to see you down in the corner of my screen. Welcome. Yeah, thank you. I had a lunch bunch with some kids, so I thought I'd pop on for the last few minutes. <laughs> oh, fabulous. Well, we had shared earlier, um, your Sarah nicely um, opened us up talking about word clouds and we beta tested um, a piece of software for her. And before that, um, we were sharing kind of wonderful things that happened this week or things that we were grateful for. Great. Well, <laughs> I, I um, can share that I'm, I'm grateful for um, nurse online nurses. I, yesterday for the very first time I had a bloody nose that I couldn't get to stop. And so my husband politely called the nurses line to ask them and they sent me to the ER. So I spent the afternoon in the ER. They took great care of me though. And I relaxed a lot from <laughs> responsibilities and uh, came home and I'm, I'm all good now, I think, but <laughs> it was, an, I'm glad they were all there for me. Good, good. Well, we are too. Um... <laughs> As, as the parents and the kids are all happy that you're there. I just have to put a little side note, you know, in this, I was just reviewing this. I, I'm just getting increasingly uh, frustrated and um, empowered and all of this about speaking out on professional development and support. Cause I keep seeing all this stuff on COVID and the future and what what parents need and what kids need and um, technology and safety and effectiveness and it's all written like that that these things just happen you know that all of a sudden poof applications are developed and educational programs are delivered and outcomes occur and <laughs> You know, and it's just like no one is stopping to ask how those things got there and how well prepared and supported the professionals, the volunteers, the paraprofessionals were who on their backs made it happen. <clears throat> anyway, just putting that out there. Um, uh, Sarah asked here about uh, Karen. Karen, would you like to share about your equity work? Sure. It's a never going, it's a never ending task. It's a daily task. It's, and it's not a task. It's just a, a drive. It's a drive. Um, um, I still have my Tuesday morning class. And so um, that's, it's going well. It's interesting. The last class we had, we talked about bias and stereotypes and microaggressions and um, implicit bias in that. And the parents that are coming in, they, they get that topic. So I don't have to give definitions or anything. They know what that is. And so they, and they, you know, the first check-in question automatically goes right to the topic and it goes deep. It's like, wow, this is amazing. Um, one of the things that I have been working on is um, 
working with a, a, a parent who was in the class last quarter um, who does um, equity. She's a school advocate with um, South East Educational Cooperative. I, I know I'm not saying it right, but whatever. Um, and she's hooked me into a bunch of different links. So I'm going to throw some links on here so you have some more connections. Um, and it's there's a, a thing called to do to do to do the 21 day um, racial equity challenge. So I'll give you, there's several of them. This is one of them. And um, okay, so the, what went up is the basic one. Um, and so you'll see like a day-to-day a -day thing of, way, of ways to keep yourself um, to grow in, in when it comes to equity. Um, let's see, there's this. Embrace Race is another website that I used a lot. Um, you, you know, you happen to ask me while I have all these things on my um, on my Google. So this is the last one is a, a YouTube video about talking about colorisms and skin color politics in the family. Um, what this speaker is going to do is um, uh, she's going to talk about what's happening locally when it comes to um, racial equity. So in our community, in our school district and in, in neighboring ones too. So she'll go across that. The last link I just put up was white supremacy culture characteristics. And that is actually a, um, a topic or document that I would like our equity team to go through um, and discuss because it has so many, so many things of, you know, it defines things that are very white. Um, and then what are our antidotes? And I, my question is always as a white person, what am I bringing and how can I change that? Um, so knowing that as a white person, I, I like structure I like and keeper, you know, and, um, and that's not necessarily the healthiest culture. So um, it's how to, and I would love your feedback on this. How do you, or how, what are some ways to broaden that so that um, as we work, we work in a new structure. So in other words, we're not just taking white systemic stuff and bringing it into another meeting. I wanna shift that. What do you recommend? Um, I'm sure that I'm, other people will jump in, but the first thing, Karen, that I think of is the power hierarchy. And, uh, you know, because my, my default is around community, right, and, and relationships and open community and having the community determine on the structure and what works best for the organism that is the community. But yet, holding those conversations, especially for me at the university is within a, a power hierarchy. Right. And so I am a person of power with, say, students in a classroom. And I wouldn't say necessarily, no matter what I do, that the students are necessarily going to feel that level of comfort because I'm the one putting it out there. So my my brief reflection and I'll mute and let other people talk is um, is just as we whatever we do, that we're aware of the context of power that we're in. Thank you. Uh, culturally responsive teaching in the brain. Yeah. Are you familiar with this one, Karen? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So I'm just remembering that in here is, and I remember like marking it to come back to and have, I know, um, about group compacts oh. and, um, and how white they are. Yes. yes. Keeping everybody comfortable. Um, and I haven't come back to it, but now you've reminded me that that is on one of many unfinished mm -hmm. pieces of business. I have yeah. This is a rich resource for anyone. I can type that. Thank you. Yeah. Thank Thanks, you. Susan. Mm -hmm. It's so hard. You know, I go with, I know some of you are familiar with the six, the, the four agreements and the six conditions, you know, Glenn Singleton stuff, courageous conversations. And we bring that in um, and we use that as kind of our base. Um, but I just, I don't know, I wanna make sure that 
we don't fall into the same old trap. And I don't know how to change that. One of the other things I've been thinking about is the distinction between intent and impact. And yeah. um, Brene Brown, we've talked about her before, um, in her Dare to Lead series is interviewing currently someone, I gotta look at my phone because I can't remember the name of the person. Emmanuel Acho. Not Emmanuel. Um, and this is Dare to Lead. I think that was um, Unlocking Us. Is it Ibram Dare Kendi? No, um, oh. it is uh, Aiko Bathia. Oh, okay, yep. Mm -hmm. And she gives some really wonderful language that I wrote down in another room about um, seeking to understand someone's intent and, and, and that they had good intentions before you help them to understand their impact. Right. So, um, so, and then you can flip that, of course, by asking for like stating that you understand those two things are different. My intent is good. My impact may be different mm -hmm. than what I intended. And I want you to hold me accountable. Mm -hmm. Yep. And we have, so that she, in our, we have that in our group. That's one of the big things we try right. to do is to hold each other accountable. And um, I think we have, I just, I, I, you know, I just worry. Well, that's the discomfort, right? I mean, yeah, I'll sit in it. <laughs> Here, what, what I listened, I listened this morning and it says, um, Emmanuel Acho says, it's only uncomfortable until you do it for a few times. And then it's not uncomfortable anymore. So just got to keep doing it. Sarah, would you mind putting the um, reference to um, Brene's? message there into the chat so it makes it into the sure um so i just put that dare to lead with Ico Bathia on it do you want more than that greta i wasn't looking at the that's chat. okay that's okay there. i i'm happy to give you well, more even, I'm even a little bit of that quote the uncomfortable the um, oh sure um the, what it is i think don't you think ug i think we can get that in there even though it's not a link specific sure sure like for important information i would uh, keep that maybe you you paid attention in the past uh, weeks i put something not the link but it's resource yeah yeah thank you thank you thank you yeah quote was actually from the Brene brown with um uh i just lost his name Emmanuel. Acho. Acho? yeah yeah i think that one was from from that Brene brown One of the things mm -hmm. that he talked about, because I just listened to that podcast this morning, um, is looking at white privilege. And white privilege isn't saying that your life hasn't been hard. It's saying that you, that your skin color hasn't contributed to the difficulty of your life. And I think that's a, that's a quote that we'll go forward with. Can you type that in? I'm definitely going to type that in. I'm just kind of looking at it real quickly going, okay, yeah. Okay, I agree. And at the same time, it feels like a big statement, Karen, because <laughs> I feel like I know some people yeah. who are white, who have been in situations <laughs> where it has been the difficulty of their life. I mean, and that's just, that's tricky. Um, hmm. What do you mean? Tell me more. Their life experience has been difficult because of their skin and their skin is white. Oh yeah, and that's what this is that's, saying. So the privilege. Yeah, it's not saying that it hasn't been hard. But what would it, what would it have been like if their skin color had been different? Yeah. That's what it looks at. Okay. Okay. Yeah, because your life can be hard as a white person, but the color of your skin can be made more difficult, right? I mean, that's the idea. Like, they're, it's made more difficult. Mm -hmm. um, and I was at a training this Monday, and they were asking, you know, can you count on one hand the number of times you've been pulled over if you're white mm -hmm. versus how many times have you been pulled over if you're black? 
and it's shockingly different. Mm -hmm. um, and so they said that is one of those one of those pieces that the white privilege is really pretty obvious when you're driving behind a vehicle. But Greta, but Greta you're a little yeah. bit the fact that there are some people that say that now they feel judged because they are white and because of their white privilege. Am, am I am I right? That is one thing that isn't really what I was referring to. I'm just referring to that I know before white privilege had it had had the floor that they were white and they were experiencing difficulty because of that, because of where they live. That not all communities is it is it necessarily better? I mean, or a, a privilege. I, that's all I'm saying is it gets so tricky when we put white on it. I get it. I get that we need awareness and there is a definite privilege to whiteness in place in specific places and in specific communities or cultures. I get that. Um, I just get, I just, I don't know what it is, some hackles in my, on my back, my neck are then, well, now I'm doing the other thing and I'm putting a whole group of people into a specific category that I'm trying not to do in another way as well. And I, that's where I just get this rumbling and anyway, that's yeah. it. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I wonder if this would help too. I get what you're saying though, Greta. And I remember you saying another week too, just some of the population that you work with and the things they might say or think. And it's important to think about how that is going to be taken in by them if you want to be effective. So it's a really good point to bring up. Um, it just makes me think about personally, my significant other has very white skin, but is Mexican and doesn't look Mexican at all, but grew up in a heavily Mexican, dark, dark skinned um, neighborhood in LA mm -hmm. and was constantly scared because he was white, right? And wasn't yeah. treated like, mm -hmm. like they thought he was lying that he was one of them and didn't believe him, but then he didn't fit in with the white mm -hmm. kids when he went to high school later on either because he was Mexican and that whole thing. So he could easily be one of these people who says, well, I have never had white privilege, but he's not like that. So I'll tell you what he would say is what I experienced then wasn't, that's not white privilege. That's not what, the, what we're talking about, but that doesn't mean I haven't experienced any white privilege mm -hmm. because he said, I can totally feel it and have been guilty of using it because I know when it's working that my skin is white in a situation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, you know, maybe that helps to think of that. It doesn't have to be either, or it can be both. They can, someone exactly. can experience both. Mm -hmm. um, and you can kind of hold, I know we talked about one time in here too, mm -hmm. kind of that idea. <laughs> yes, I was just going to say that, that holding two truths. It doesn't have to be one or one or the other for somebody. Thank you, Carrie. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, great on Kelly, uh, Carrie. Uh, I mean, uh, so I interviewed, I had a project at school, right? Interviewed like about this topic, what privilege. And um, so one of my interview, uh, UV, uh, so she, sorry. Okay, so uh, she, she was my um, Bible teacher, right? She, you know, you will never believe. Sorry. Huh? Okay, I, I'm hearing someone talking. Okay, sorry. <laughs> yes, my computer, I guess. Uh, so she, uh, so um, you will never believe she has, you know, white privilege. She's so kind to everyone, right? right? But she lost her job because she was bla blamed. Um, she, she, was, she had pr white privilege. I could never believe, I mean, no, this, actually she was a, a victim uh, from, you know, these two groups between Africa, America and uh, Africa, Africa in their college, right? So they, you know, like she uh, unknowingly evolved into this kind of, you know, like a group struggle. She didn't even, uh, she was not even aware, but she became the victim. She was laid off, you know, she was fired because they blamed her had, you know, white, white, white privilege. Yeah, so I really understand. And, and as, on the other hand, 
I do. I feel like you know, yes, these cases happen. However, it is not that as as you know the percentage as you know, uh, people in 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 color, the skin in color, they receive encounter more challenges, right? So even myself, right? So when I was in school, like in the class discussion, I mean, English is my second language, of course, and also the culture, sometimes I could not relate to what they are talking about, right? And then, you know, so situation like that, we, I often will automatically think, oh, why they are not um, listening to, to me? Why they, you know, they not pay attention to what, you know, I want to, uh, express maybe they, you know they just don't care i mean or like a um, racism or is it, or they just scared you know they do not know me right they don't know my culture and they're scared not you know not able to communicate right so i often have that kind you know when you meet because because you know my i am asian and then i would automatically connect the situation to my skin color even though it might not be that case Right, that is another thing. I think, like uh, psychologically, we are um, kind of, um, you know, kind of, uh, you know, you have some kind of uh, inferior, inferior feeling. I would say that. I just felt like um, reinforcing the holding two truths piece and. Um, that it's not, ironically, it's not black and white, right? It's, it's, it's complicated. And there are, um, you know, I, I have a friend who has a white mom and um, a biologically uh, black dad and um, definitely within her peer group growing up being mixed, um, was its whole own different kind of screwed up privilege or not um, situation of not fitting into either group. Um, and, and so for her, even just having some whiteness in her very much was a negative thing um, within the African-American community. It was like, you think you're better than us because you're light skinned or your hair is different or, you know, that whole mixed thing is a whole nother piece to add um, to sometimes sometimes being white um, in a smaller community can can make things more challenging. But I think the the question then is is looking at our country, like not your neighborhood or this small group, but what are our systems? What is our country? And then that I think sometimes helps bring back the perspective with white privilege is there's so much power invested in whiteness that that's why there's some pushback in smaller communities. Um, and and why so, for some people, they may experience like the reverse racism or whatever, but that, that like certain things being harder because of their whiteness, but that's because of this whole underlying power structure of, of white power in our country. Yeah, I, I totally agree, Becca. And I think this is a value for us sort of in our perspective from an ecological systemic perspective is that, you know, we can hold the needs of an individual, right? And, um, and in a class, but while we're doing that, we also see behind each person this much wider ecology of influences on their lives, right? And also the the systemic racism and the and the institutionalization of things that we can't do anything about. I mean, we can advocate, we can write letters to the editor, we can write letters to our Congress people, right? I mean, we can advocate for policy change, but it is what it is. I mean, one of the sadnesses in my life being 65, as I look back at all of the, the changes that were put in the civil rights movement, right? Put it in place in the late, when I was in, when I was like 13, 14 years old, right? And pardon my French, but this shit still is going on, right? I mean, it's, it's very, very, very sad to see um, what happened with George Floyd, right? I mean, that would have been the reality in the Watts riots back in the 60s, right? So it's, it, again, it's it's so much bigger than what 
we can do, but it, it is something to keep in mind for us to remember that this has inherited. I, I did, I had a, the good fortune, um, but stressful nonetheless of working in the Washington DC area. And, um, you know, I was sort of smiling at the thing about that your, that, um, your skin hasn't sort of led to discrimination when as a white person in a predominantly black middle-class area of Prince George's County, Maryland, um, I was always judged as being not being understanding and being part of the white supremacy movement and, and things like that. And it was a tough, I mean, I, I, the very first day of work, I was sort of, I, I worked for the state of Maryland and I was taught that your jurisdiction was the state of Maryland. And I got a call from a gentleman in the District of Columbia who was asking for information on the, um, what's called the family reunion. And it, this was like a whole big thing. And especially with African-American families, but like I'm new from Wisconsin and I don't know anything about this and I'm just trying to do my job and I answer the phone. And, and also this guy says he's from DC. And so I help him the best way that I can, which is to refer him to the Washington DC Cooperative Extension Service, figuring their jurisdiction, plus they have way more knowledge about this than I do. I hung up the phone and within one minute, I got a call. Like I got a call asking why I discriminated against this gentleman, this black gentleman for, and, and I would not be helpful to him, right? And it was, and that was my awakening to being a white person in a mixed, area and the, and especially the historical racism that is in the Washington DC area. Anyway, so that's long winded. So I, but I, but I completely agree that we, as we're doing this, we have to remember these larger systemic forces that are keeping these things in place. And the last thing that I would say is also social media that just reinforces people's attitudes and is a difference from now from the 1960s. And so as there are these institutional problems and still a predominantly white male and older Congress that continues these laws and, and rules to keep things the way they are is that makes it even harder to make change um, is, that we have such we, the social that social media interactions just fossilize people's views and give them a place to vent anonymously and in a very trolly fashion. But you know, one of the things that I share with students is how you know in 1997, as a country, we were much more politically central, and by 2007, you see these mountains separate, and and the correlation with our use of social media is exactly those years, right? Anyway, so just saying that in terms of systemic effects, not only institutionalized and systemic racism. But now, most recently, what unfortunately has just contributed to it is just cementing people's beliefs and giving them a sounding board through social media. You know, Susan, I'm in a group seat group scholarship at uh, CSP, right? So this uh, group is a Southeast Asia uh, teacher group scholarship. So all the people in this group are color. Um, I mean, we, when we talk racism, right? So, you know, like Nikki said, you know, someone says there's no, it's not existing. Just, that is just like, I mean, how can you say that, right? So in this group, we, you know, we talk about everyone had traumatic experience with the maltreatment because of their color, because of the, the, the race, right? So many, I mean, they even got shot because of their color. I mean, that is, it's really, yeah, it's, it's real. It's not, you know, it's real, yeah. Um, Karen, can you close us off on a feeling grateful and positive? <laughs> I'm because I'm aware of the time, and yeah. I also know. I mean, this is a super hard. All of our conversations are so are so hard, and really get into um, challenging stuff. That you're all so amazing to 
stand up. Somebody put in in chat like there's two ways of doing it um, imperfectly and not at all. Right. So um, so my imperfect, perfect connections. <laughs> there you go. That's what we do. That's what we do. Um, I, I can leave you with a quote. Um, and again, I think this is Emmanuel Acho. Um, he talked about being an ally. And he said, you are willing to risk your white privilege in the name of justice and equality for marginalized voices. So it's what we do with that white privilege. We have it, be aware of it, make sure it's on your radar, make sure you see that, like you were talking about the systemic um, parts of that, but just know that, are we using that for justice and equality for marginalized voices? Yep. That's where we go. That's what being an ally is. Thank you. Wow. Well done. Well done. Good way to bring things to closure. Well, thank you, everybody. Is there anything else before we close for the day that um, the group can do for you? One question. Does anybody know if Manafi is going to allow for you to register and then view things on a delayed basis or are they going to be real time only um because if we're they're going to be real time only then we need to rearrange our schedule so that we're free because we for, just forgot usually we don't have classes those two days um and does anybody know well jen and i were just in a board meeting and jen i don't recall that being an option do you i don't i don't recall them talking about that but um we could probably f ask Sue Stoner if she if they've talked about that. She didn't mention it. Because if it's real time or bust, then we do need to rearrange our schedule so that we can attend because we have we have classes. Yeah. yeah, I was thinking about that too during the meeting and wondering. Um, but there was a pretty thorough presentation about it, and it was not mentioned that it would be there would be recordings. Okay. Because yeah, we have two months. Yeah. Two months from now so anybody needs to make arrangements now's a chance to do it even for attending virtually um speaking of manafi though just to quick put a plug in the there's open nominations right now for board members so yeah um please if you are interested if you everybody at this table like we need more fresh uh voices at the manafi table so um, email Nancy Wallace, or it's right on the Manafi website, I believe, too. Yep, go to the website. Uh, go to the website and self-nominate. Self-nominate. Just do it. Join <laughs> us, please. Also, one more Manafi thing. Um, um, there is an effort underway, um, and I think, Shelly, you're on that um, community of practice that Katie Smith is leading through a grant yep. at MDE. Um, there's um, an effort underway for emergency parent ed content. Um, and when there's more communication out about that, I could forward um, to this group. But there are, um, there are so many places that have no content um, in, their, in their districts. They don't have a parent educator, a licensed parent educator, or their they're, they have parent educators, but their um, programs are not operating. And it's it sounded pretty widespread to me. So they're looking for um, COVID specific, pande pandemic specific content um, that, that would expire. So I don't know, one of the examples was about self care that, you know, how do you take care of yourself in a pandemic? And what are the effects of that? And um, we really haven't brainstormed a ton of topics yet, but there is a, um, um, a formatted PowerPoint um, that, any, that we can use if you wanted to record yourself, if you wanted to just send a lesson in that format. It's still not super clear to me, except that it's like, you know, uh, like in Texas, people are sending water bottles like that. There are pe that that's what's happening across the state for ECFE is they just need 
some temporary content to get them over the hump of getting through the pandemic. So I'll put a plug out for that too. Where, uh, you know, I have a whole file on COVID re resources for, for parenting and families and children. I mean, I'd be, it's a Google file. I can share all of that. Um, or are you wanting direct lesson plan? Yeah, you're wanting lesson plan. Okay. Content, like I like me, video, a okay. video of me doing a lesson on, um, I don't know, like um, we have a topic I'm thinking of now that's called parenting during challenging times. And there's like, you know, five things to consider, like, you know, something like that. Okay. Um, yeah, I thought that too, like, let's just share all we have, but what they need is actual content to share with parents. Like a 20 minute video. Oh, wow. How do we send this? Who do we send this? Where's our, where does well, it go? Uh, we just found out about it like an hour ago. So okay. I'll, I'll get everybody the info and I'll send it out to this group so that um, I tried to go, the document isn't even open for edit yet. So we will get it to you. So um, Ellen, what about the peers and all of the lesson plans and everything that you've collected and and people have contributed. I mean, it may not be the emergency stuff, but I would imagine that there's content in there and lesson plans that somebody could kind of cherry pick and find fit to their needs. Yeah, I, well, and it, I mean, there's there's a there's fewer lesson plans than I'd like and a lot more handouts. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, but if somebody, whoever has a lesson on something particular, they can record it themselves because that's what they're looking for. They're looking for an actual like, it's basically, you're looking for a webinar, like a baby webinar. Okay, yeah. So there is content, Susan, you're right. But if what it sounds like, you know, I wouldn't wanna pull somebody's lesson plan off of there and be like, hmm, here's a lesson plan. I have no idea what this person was talking about, but I'm gonna teach it. Um, you know, I think everyone would wanna kind of teach their own content. I mean, there's stuff there for sure, but not, I think like in a webinar format, so to speak. It's a great idea though. Yeah. Okay, well, thanks, Karen uh, and Christy. Thanks for keeping us posted on that. Um, well, good. Well, lots of good stuff happening. And um, um, yeah, I want to connect on the Manafi thing because I know that will be like our noontime thing is during the, if it's live, you know, and kind of how that will fit in. I contacted Linda about some connection with Perfect with this group and being supportive during the Manafi conference, but I haven't heard anything back. So, um, so, but I, um, if it's a week to skip because everybody will be doing the Manafi thing, then it'll be a week to skip, but um, coordination would be good too. So, um, okay. Well, thank you everybody. Um, I hope you all continue to have um, a week filled with gratitude and wonderful things happening and with warmer weather. Nothing bad about that, huh? Okay, everyone. Bye-bye. Everybody have a good week.